So today we're going to be going over the materials and graphics tab specifically in the material editor. Um, so what I've got is I've created a project and I've used one of the default brick walls to create a create a wall here that we're going to look at as our as our sort of model to adapt and change how this ends up looking. So you can see I, I have a brick texture already on here. I've also got a CMU texture down here below. Um, but this, what we're going to be talking about today are just is just the graphics tab within the material editor. You can find that under manage materials and it's going to be this graphics tab here. And this is a common brick, so under brick common, this is that pattern that we're seeing here. Um, so getting into this, we're gonna we're gonna show how we can adapt and change this as well as kind of create our own sort of look to this. So right now we have a foreground pattern um, of this brick hatch, um, and the color is black. Um, the reason that we may want to change the color is maybe this is a little too bold when you actually print out a drawing set if your hatch is black sometimes that can be a little overwhelming so maybe you want to subdue it a little bit maybe we drop this down to maybe like a light gray so if I hit OK and hit apply now that brick texture it's still there but it's a little it's a little more subtle um, maybe that's a little bit too subtle so we'll go kind of in between with a, a little bit softer gray there and now you can see with this being a gray and these other textures being a black those are standing out quite a bit more so if there's a certain hatch that you want to kind of override the others and call itself out you can do that by adjusting these sort of surface uh, pattern colors so the texture alignment you can see you can use the arrows to align the the render appearance and the surface pattern so uh, it's really tough to see especially in in this view because the render appearance is so dark um, but there's actually a, a picture of the brick on here and I can shift this texture up and down to try to align it with whatever the brick image behind is um, that way I can I can kind of align what this hatch is looking like versus what the render appearance is going to be um, so then the background color it's this it works the same way as the foreground color it's just a secondary um, secondary hatch pattern here so let's go ahead and apply something here so we've got the option of a drafting pattern we do not have the option of a model pattern uh, as, as a background option for the foreground we do have the option of both so a model pattern is going to be scaled with the model itself the drafting pattern is going to change sizes based on the scale of your view um, so what I mean by that is if this if this model pattern this model pattern is set up so that's three and five eighths between the two lines here three and five eighths or four inches depending on whether they took crowd into account and that sort of thing so let's say that I go from an eighth inch to a half inch equals a foot scale this is always going to show up as three and five eighths or four inch spacing regardless of whatever the scale is I'll be able to scale that hatch pattern and it's going to always read as four inches in a drafting view it's going to change drastically whether it's a let's say we go from a diagonal down so I'm gonna apply that diagonal down we'll say okay so you can see I've got this diagonal down drafting pattern on there and if I go ahead and change this from eighth inch to a half inch all of a sudden you can see how much more dense that pattern becomes um, so because my I, I didn't change the wall at all so if I had that brick hatch on here it's gonna stay the exact same there's nothing going to change about that but as I change this it's gonna change how many lines are in there um, just to populate the density of it for printing purposes essentially um, if all of a sudden we were trying to we were trying to print this hatch at eighth inch per foot and it had the same amount of lines as it does here that's almost going to read as a solid gray uh, when we go to print that out so drafting patterns 
can adapt and change based on the scale at which they're on, um, whereas model patterns do not. So we'll change this back to that model and then we'll scroll down to the brick and we'll apply that back to where it was. So like I said, the background pattern, we could throw in, um, let's say we do the diagonal down and we'll change this to like a, a gray as well and hit apply. So now we can get a kind of overlap of two separate patterns. So maybe you've got a, you have three different kinds of brick on the building. You could apply this to all of them and then maybe you signify each brick type differently from a different background uh, hatch as well. The cut pattern, this is going to change, this is basically the same as your, your surface pattern, your foreground pattern here, only what does it look like when it's cut through. So um, let's say we go to our level one and we're going to create a section view through this, this wall. And I'm going to right click and hit go to view. And now if I change this to a fine detail level, you'll see this is the brick that I've got going here. And I'm going to change this to say a half inch equals a foot. There we go. So this is obviously a drafting pattern because it changed the amount of diagonal hash that we've got there. So if I go back into my materials, you can see my cut pattern here is a diagonal up. So this is a diagonal up hatch pattern. When I cut through that, it changes to that. So if I all of a sudden throw a cross hatch on there, that's essentially telling me what is this material going to look like when I cut through it in section. And similarly, I can go ahead and change uh, the kind of density or the how bold it is by changing the color of this, just like I did the surface pattern. So that's a, uh, an introduction to kind of cut patterns and surface patterns there. The shading is just for the shading view that you have down here. So if I go back to my 3D view and I change this to shaded, what color you've got applied there is what's going to show up uh, there. So you can still see my, my hatch patterns on this, but I can change this color uh, to just get a, a general look um, at whatever, whatever I'm really wanting to do there. I can also add a transparency and things like that to it. So looking at model and drafting patterns, you can see we've got all these different options for model patterns. If you want to edit one of them, you can come down here and hit edit. and You'll see you can, there's limited things that you can actually do here. There's parallel lines and crosshatch. You can adjust the angle, the line spacing, things like that. You can also import custom options. Um, if you find hatch patterns from AutoCAD, you can import those here. Uh, so for instance, let's say I'm going to browse. I actually have under my textures. I got some pattern files here. So let's say I just use this, this stone pattern. So this brings in a, a stone pattern. What scale you want that to be at, you can adjust the scale here. And I can say, okay, yeah, I'm gonna use that and hit apply. Now you can see the scale of that is probably off by quite a bit because it's just showing up as like a solid gray. So if I want to come back in here and adjust this and say, okay, I'm going to edit this, import scale, we'll say we want it to be five. We'll make it extra kind of large at this point and see if we can get that to show up a little bit better. Let's go to our hidden line. So there you can see it's still probably a little, that's an absolutely terrible hatch pattern, obviously, but um, you can see it's starting to get a little bit larger. I can adjust the scale just to get to where I want to be at. But you can import uh, PAT files that you, that you find from AutoCAD, or you can create your own PAT files in AutoCAD and then import them uh, into Revit to get the patterns that you want. So that's a, a, a brief overview of, of model patterns. Drafting patterns work similarly. So you've got a, a concrete hatch. They have a bunch of defaults already built in here. Um, but if we go to edit, these are all custom um, options here, other than kind of your, your line work ones. Um, 
but all of this works similar to how I mentioned before where this is these are going to adjust in size based on the scale of your your drawing itself so that is the difference between a drafting pattern and a model pattern you can also create new patterns name them you can delete ones or you can duplicate based off of various uh, ones that you have here and then adjust kind of the scale and, and things like that so um, so that's a, a brief introduction to graphics and creating the your model views um, how you want for construction document purposes and getting that kind of hatch pattern and look that you're after